received the information that you asked for? I mean, is it, is it just it was received, now? It was received about a week and a half later. Nobody contacted us to say, hey, you know, we're running late with it. We were at a meet, we had an actual meeting that night, and we were waiting for somebody to show up. Nobody even showed up for Eagle Creek to that board meeting that night. And I did get a call from Mr. Pianfinetti, who said that, you know, it was his fault that he didn't have it done. You know, but this was after our board met to move forward. And so if I may, that's untrue. I called a week beforehand, right, because they asked to have to deliver a week before, and I said, no, I'm, I'm, I'm out of town. I've been injured through, uh, I've been injured, and I've been going through uh, uh, practice to get my, my leg healed. Um, what we did notice is on the official agenda, the topic was never listed. And on an official open meeting agenda, the topic's not on there, you can't have the conversation. So to, to have to go through some of the dates that he's, he's mentioned, okay. there's only been one request for information. Okay. And that was, we made the request to the ESC. And this is the letter actually sent to their attorney. And it outlined everything to date. I've supplied this to also Commissioner Gomez and Commissioner Lila. Okay, yes. I, I think the, we're getting a little off track here. The reason why the, I brought this to your attention was not because I want to get anybody out, not because I know that that part of the town is rolling in money. No. We don't want to be in, 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 that, in that same situation where we are also hurting for money. That's we're, what we're trying to prevent. No, no one's off track. This is a problem right. that exists. Right. That we're trying to that we're I trying didn't feel to that. We're talking about ESD number two and, and I mean... With We've got an area out there that y'all are involved in coverage, and and we're trying to come to a solution as to how to deal with that area, and that this is part of dealing with how to come to that solution. Uh, Judge, do we know what? And I was not here last week. Do we know what percentage of the hours a week Eagle Creek's not able to cover their medical services right now? Not very many. I mean, we cover most of the time. So well, the yeah. piece I was actually trying to figure out is actually how many calls is Laverne and, and Floresville actually covering? It's not, not percentage, the number of actual it's calls. It's not the call volume. It's having to have staff available to cover the area. How many days? It's at least once a week there for a while. Once or twice a week when I need a... Do you have staff? these actual stats? Because my records show different. Oh, Mr. Wilson. You did some research on that yeah, because we've also covered for both Floresville oh, and Laverne. Oh, how many? No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I back in, maybe. Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, we've taken calls into your area. Well, I'm taking calls, yes, sir. Yeah, we're out of order here now. You, 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 you don't address each other, you address the court. Right. Uh, Mr. Wilson, you did some checking here a while, some time back. The owners of the facility in Eagle Creek is the fire department. It was the Emergency Services Corporation. Emergency Services Corporation. Is there a contract on record uh, with Shermed, with the Emergency Service Corporation, to operate out of the Shermed facility? So we offered Shermed the ability to stage out of that. Um, it started having issues with the ESD, so we asked them to leave. They're no longer in the building. They're no longer in the building. So those issues with the ESD, we had several. For well, the, I, I, last year we've had several uh, citizens come and voice their concern, and we've directed them to the. It, it was presented to us from the ESD. We've had a so number of ESD, we, and that's solution, that, that's done. So uh, the uh, the citizens out there elected to have an ESD. ESD. Commissioners, you have an obligation to provide the service, at least in that area. Yes. Now, whether you do it with the existing one there or you go outside, that's your priority. That, that's why you're there. You make that decision. That needs to be made for them. We would like to have an opportunity, if you do make it, or for whoever in the French area, to to take care of that. Yes. Uh, now, uh, I don't know, I don't know how to divvy up who the, the, you know, the people that, if Eagle Creek is not covering, all of the time, and you're having to do some of the time, it's in the Eagle Creek area, it'd be the same.
same the other way around. So there is something due to those people. If, I agree 100%. And uh, so I, I don't know how how we reach that solution. Anyone has something, something to think what is above? Ten percent per, per day of yeah, if we could get the days that are required, you know, like I knew what days it was, and I could make a percentage of that. Y'all have a record. Y'all have a record of the days that you don't have coverage out there that someone's covering for you. Um, I'd have to go back and look. I believe we do. Uh, that's, uh, you know, I mean, as she said, it's important if you have to stand up, even if you don't send it to any of them, that's an important part of it. Uh, did we all's records re reflect those things? Yeah, we could also just get with dispatch. They also know okay. when when we're when we have to cover backup. So well, that's have not going to be backup, entirely right? correct because if we're to do that, this if, if we're actually on an active call and Floresville or Vernon yeah, gets dispatched, so that's going to show up because it's going to be the same call. And I think that's pretty much that's universal be across the county. Yeah. That if you're if you're actually yeah. on call, if you don't yeah. have someone on call, it's a different. But that's what you're going to get from the dispatch records. And you're also going to get the inverse, where we're into their, their coverage areas as well. <laughs> yeah, I just to think, Mary. Has dispatch been no, informed in not. advance? No. That, if, if Eagle Creek knows that Tuesday and Wednesday of next week during the business hours, you're not going to be able to cover because everybody's at work. Is that something that dispatch knows in advance? We have notified them in advance. Okay, is, that, is that done routinely so that the other departments can know when they may have extra areas they need to cover? So absolutely, yeah. We try to do our best to, let them, to inform them to make sure there's consistent 911 coverage. That's the best for the community. When, when is the revenue stream? Has it, have y'all received anything yet? Yeah, so we, we started receiving revenue this year and we're pretty much seeing it dry. It's drying up um, as far as our collections go. Um, we do have revenues. <coughs> Um, and just something, uh, I'll throw this out, it's probably off topic, but on the uh, county-wide district, um, I talked to uh, the county judge in DeWitt County, and we're not going to have it as much as they do, but he expects that their tax rate is going to have gone down by uh, more than a third over the course of about three years because of all the mineral properties. I don't know if it's that bad, but there are not going to be any mineral properties I don't think in the even the service area, but the county-wide tax rate is going to go down. Yeah. Uh, I, I, in our business, in our business plan, uh, I've talked with some of the area developers and all that, and to try to get a feel of what our expected growth is going to be. Uh, it looks like it's going to be about four, about four percent. That's not so much because of property values, valuations going up. It's going to be because of, of more homes being built. Uh, Kevin Brown tells me that he's got lots of lots being sold, but he can only build fifty. You know, you know that. Two different angles okay. on this. What you're talking about is the money's coming into you to be able to afford. What he's talking about is the taxpaying public will not be paying more taxes to have an ES countywide ESP because of the the, the tax rates going to be falling throughout the county more than last year. Yes, sir. And Judge, I just want to go back to the beginning when we started this. The Hopefully the point of the ESD was to help us improve our, or bring our equipment up to date and stuff like that. We don't have a city to follow and the way it's been going now, you know, $50,000 has been spent in lawyer's fees and, you know, we haven't, the fire department had, and the EMS haven't seen anything and this is, you know, it's January 1 is when they're supposed to take an effect basically. And we're working for them for free because they're they're responsible for it now, not 2014, but January 1. So, but the idea was was to upgrade our equipment and have a little money for a siphon. Now, the Bernie and Floresville, they have money for siphons. We don't. Well, they still have the option to go elsewhere for that service. Pardon? I said they have the option to go elsewhere for the service. Because y'all cannot come to an agreement. That's no, but that's yeah, the philosophical it's difference it's is. is there, we've been told by Eagle Creek that people voted to fund Eagle Creek. I've been told by people, that, and even myself, that I voted to have it because I saw it as being a means of having reliable fire and EMS services. So, whatever the so understanding, whatever that, whatever the understanding, Your Honor, I, I think we're dancing around the subject here. We, we had 
I believe the ESD has the capability to put a short-term performance-based contract in place to be able to handle the needs of the community while they seek out the long-term resolution for, uh, for services. And I put this forward to the ESD in the past and I was ignored. Right? It's very easy to do this, especially when you make the performance base. And that will give us the ability to cover the site and staff and get the paid volunteers in place. Well, and, you know, that's the whole thing I've been, I mean, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but the citizens of Eagle Creek, and for each of you are, are over oh, right. each of I'm, I don't live in Eagle Creek. But you're the part of Eagle Creek service area. Of the service area. That's the service area. Needs to come together and work out a solution. Sometimes you have to give both ways a little bit. But I, and I don't know, I don't know all of the hang-ups or whatever. But as you mentioned already, the fact that there is no communication and work together has already cost the citizens a great deal. And like I said, I'm not pointing fingers or fault because I don't know where it lies. But I do know that it's important uh, for for everyone to work together in anything you do. Uh, and uh, the, uh, it just uh, I, I don't I don't see where it hurts. The only thing we can do today is to make a determination of who's covering and whatever money we have to yeah, well, we coverage is. But outside of that, y'all need to come together and uh, and work out something or just or determine you can't work something. I can tell you based on our on our the last year and a half and, and I'm just speaking for me and the board because if we had all the other four members of the board here, mm -hmm. we could say that's the direction we've tried to work for the last year and a half. And it hasn't we've been we've been snubbed on certain requests for information that we can, we're not we don't want to use that provide that information because as far as calls so we can figure out what the cost of, uh, of things are but they, <coughs> they didn't provide any of the information until December when we've been asking for it all summer because they felt that we would use that against them in getting another service provider your honor along those lines um, intellectual capital of the company intellectual uh, capital, intellectual of, the capital company. of the company right uh, I'm sorry, a nonprofit organization is an organization, is a business with intellectual capital, right? Those items, right, call volume, revenue, all that, all that information is intellectual capital of the company because we provide a service to the community. And as such, all that information can be gathered through another means, another process that the ESD wishes to do so, right? We, when we asked the ESD if they were going to put this to bid, the answer was yes, there was no incentive to have us provide intellectual capital. Why? Because it would be used against us. It's simple, just like a normal business transaction. Well, so it's it would it appear to me that if you are already out there and you have the whatever, there's no way an outside bidder could outbid. Exactly. And we so, put, so why would you not supply the information to? So the the original contract that was put out for bid had nothing about per capita or anything else about it. It was based on capabilities, and we responded to what the capabilities are and what we have to offer as a service. They then came through and said. You know, and I actually brought it up during during um, orals and presentation exactly what they had in the contract. Um, they then asked what we could do, and I provided a firm number, 130,000 a year for combined fire and EMS. Right. We then came back when they asked for further information. I revised it and I gave it a per capita cost for fire and a per capita cost for EMS, and I provided that to both commissioners who came to my house for a meeting um, in February. Provided it to them. I also gave them a high-level overview of what our budget looked like. And then we didn't hear anything from them. So do you think it's appropriate when you're taking county money from the taxpayers to say that, oh, we have this intellectual capital and we're supposed to be a nonprofit, but we're going to hide all our numbers? So help me help me understand what a nonprofit is. You're, you're, you're legal counsel. What, what is the definition of a nonprofit organization? You're taking money from the taxpayers here to try and provide a service. Agreed. Okay, and, and you get all kinds of benefits. Do we provide those audit and numbers to the county? I don't know. Do they provide their numbers? 
No, it says our own. Yes, we do. So, how about we just put in the contract from now on? But you know, I'm going to suggest to the commissioners that they put in the contract. If you'll excuse me, sir, if you'll excuse me, sir, I'm going to suggest to the commissioners that they put in the contract, especially if you look at a countywide contract, that anybody who takes public money will provide the ESD that they're under with every number they ask for. And, and under an ESD agreement, that's typically in the agreement that's provided. Under the no, county under contract the, today, the county contract. if well, that is in there, we, we're, we're required to provide numbers to Chief Baker, and we do that. Just in the contract. Okay. And we provide that. So, which I said, they had the means to go get the month, the, uh, uh, they had the means to go get all the information directly from Chief Baker. Sir, uh, Mr. Pimp, but they didn't get involved really until late uh, in the summer and early fall. We had been asking questions for these numbers before we even really got heavy into talking of do, even building a request for proposal. Uh, we would ask the chief, the president of uh, Eagle Creek, to provide those numbers, and they would say, go find them yourself. These are little things. I've, I've got a background in a, a nonprofit organization, so I'm a master's in public administration. And my understanding is, is a nonprofit is there to serve the people and are, are subject to what the people's needs and wants are. And if they're taking the people's money, they're accountable to the pe people ultimately. And that's what a nonprofit is. Uh, I've got our legal counsel here, and if you'd like to speak on it, uh, it please, please key in. <laughs> hey, I'm Chris, I'm the uh, Basically, what's going on here, I mean, if they're asking for the numbers, they're taking public money. We think that those should be turned over to be taken into account when figuring out how to provide <coughs> the services that the ESD is providing to the people. And it's just little things where they're asking, you know, for this to try to get this up and running and just kind of stonewall at these turns and, and that's basically what it's come down to on there. So has the numbers been provided to your organization? Uh, they were way after the, the deadline. So as I'm going through and I provided this to Mr. Rosenberg, there has never been a request made to Ego Creek in any manner whatsoever for any information prior to the RFP. Sir, that and I provided this to Mr. Rosenberg, and I provided it to the ESD. In fact, I went through each of the agendas and the meeting minutes, and there's not, no official record in there for any request for information. Uh, I provided the uh, County Sorry. Commissioner Judge, I provided you a request for information by CCU and uh, Commissioner Gamez and uh, Commissioner Wiley on that specific request for information that was sent and sent by FedEx, I believe, through Mr. Rosenberg's office to Eagle Creek. It wasn't accepted until probably a week after it was sent. Uh, it was signed for a week after uh, the request was sent by Ms. Schreiber. Uh, we do have all that information. And, and I agree, that single request for information was post-RFP orals. It was made in, in, in the end of uh, I'm sorry, at the beginning of January, I have the dates here if you need me to look it up. And this is all the information I've provided to the commissioners of when that request. Yes, yes. 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 in the whole in there. It's including the whole area that you have to be I had to the whole I had the contract pulled up. Uh, sir, I'll, I'll change our business plan it, based on the information I gained, gained today about a county wide ESD that. that I'll take out a little, the caveat that I put into our business plan stating that all contingent on the award of, of, uh, of EMS services, uh, there was a disclosure saying that it's contingent on how the vote came out. Uh, so with that said, I'll take that out and we'll just, we'll have a hard shoot for October 1st and we'll continue forward with our, uh, our uh, schedule to uh, Submit an RFP and receive bids and have an October first award. I mean, there's Attorney General's opinion that says the county can fund firefighting inside a ESD. I assume that they would have the same thing for EMS. Just an example that the ESD won the funding that we give each fire department. Uh, it was asked, what are you going to do? Now that they have an ESD, you're going to take that away. I said, well, it'd really be unfair to the citizens of that community because they pay overall taxes like everyone else. So even with the ESD, the monies that set aside by the county will still be given. But we just need to have the services that we're giving it for. And uh, the, uh, you know, if we know what we're dealing with, then we can deal with it. 
So right it's, now it's 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 a good shotgun mm -hmm. effect, and, and and so what we're going for looking at now is dealing temporarily with a prorated amount to to the coverage days that's there, and and it's in it's in the actually it's in the Eagle Creek Fire Department and and EMS is it's in their prerogative whether anybody has anything to do with it. If you can make the coverage, then there won't be any other right. money coming out of it. So I want to make every effort so that you know to get that covered uh -huh. and a lot of times it's just cheap and I, but we're doing it. Right. You know, because we care about the citizens of our community. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and, to the, and that's a bottom line for everybody to keep in mind. In, in the defense of the ESD, sir, we're volunteers. Uh, we're we, right. we're non-paid appointees to this. We we meet more than more than the time that's required by statute. We meet twice a month, and and to ask us, we don't have an administrative uh, body that works every day that can help us along with making these decisions. So you're asking, what I'm hearing is we're not responding in a in a in a fast enough manner. Well, you're you're talking about eight hours a month at, at most that we have to sit down and make the decisions. Well, no, I don't, I don't think anybody. No, that, that's what I'm hearing from. I don't think anybody has, has tried to, from, from the court here, has tried to make it sound like. Well, I'm, I'm, what I'm, my whole deal is you, him, anyone else out there, the lack of coordination in a community. I, I'm not talking about uh, anybody that's not responding in a certain amount of time. I just think it's a shame that a community cannot come together. And come up with a solution whenever the, the, the voters are given that opportunity to do so. And, and, I, and I, like I say, I can test that we, we've been there and trying for a year and a half now. But, but I just, you know, I got Eagle Creek a little bit, so let me just say, you're dealing with Eagle Creek as a volunteer organization, and you say, well, they were late getting us this information, but we've had it since December. Well, I mean, that, that sounds like they did get you the information you said, and you've had it since December. I understand it may be aggravating if you wanted it by a certain time and it slid back, but I don't know if that should shipwreck the whole thing forever because you didn't get the information by the deadline you wanted. As long as you have it, now you can use it. It, it wasn't December. It was in the November, or sorry, the beginning of December uh, board meeting where we voted to go into direct negotiations for fire and EMS services with uh, Eagle Creek. It was voted uh, four to one, and we went into that on with a, con with a contingent uh, agreement that we would come up in our first January meeting with a list of, of concerns from the board, which which they did, we delivered, and again it was it was the date was missed, and we had a meet as part of the meeting we met the next following meeting where the deadline wasn't met, and that's the way the board voted. Uh, it's it's five people making the decision. I'm not you know I'm I've been the poster child for for everything, but there's there's oh, believe believe me. Speaking of the board, the fire department, the EMS, uh, even though y'all are not come together and getting it done, we all have a deep appreciation for your services to the community. But it's, but at the same time, it is important that you come together. Forget personalities, forget everything except what your goal is there and come together. Take your pool of money and whatever's here and the people that's available and work out a plan that serves the people and, and that's the bottom line and if you don't want to do that whether it be a volunteer fire department volunteer EMS or the board if that's not your goal then you need to find something else to do with your time that's well I'll, I'll take the concerns of the court to a dark board and, and see how they like to proceed in the meantime uh, uh, I, from what I understand we paid our party to a universe that's July, July 1st. Yeah. Does Eagle Creek feel they can make coverage to July 1st? Mm -hmm. So y'all should be able to cover 24-7 from now to July 1st. That's what our goal is, is to cover every single day. I mean, it's very hard to do that. So it should be any problem. So I think it's unfair to say any problem. Right? Well, no, I'm not because our, our volunteers do have work and personal lives. And things do come up in that area. Now, our goal is to cover every ship between now and then. Okay. Now, barring right. some unforeseen right. issues with our staff. Thousand dollars. 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 Thousand
probably be the right side to get an attorney that deals with that all the time. I said, Russell would be a lady with that. I'm sure that if that is the case, you know, by Mr. Hanson from ESD1. But uh, somewhere along the line, we're going to have to determine how that can be put on the ballot as far as ESD2. Because honestly, this is just for EMS services, it's not for fire. It's EMS services. And it's county wide. And our thoughts on this is that the pools of money are drying up. Uh, and by having a, a board in place that can oversee the entire thing, we're much like some of y'all who take care of roads, so court, uh, detention here, and so forth, so on. I mean, it's, it's, there's a lot of things that occupy our attention. This is such an important thing, particularly if you look at the arrow we in with the trucks and things coming through, the, the fatality accident that's occurring in uh, Torrance County. We've had more fatalities this year than we normally have in, in the whole year already in our county. So the need for our services has never been greater. And with the federal drying up on your, uh, your uh, Medicare, Medicaid, things like that, the monies are going to be more scarce unless we put something in place to deal with it. If we put something in place to deal with it with a board uh, that uh, can uh, devote their full attention to the operation of it. They'll be paid employees. They'll have to be paid employees because of the amount of work that uh, the way it's coming up. It gives each of you that's dedicated to your job an opportunity to hold a job within the county that has benefits and, and really serves you <laughs> as well as the community. But by putting it all in one basket, you can better serve the county and put the resources where they're needed to serve the people be on, on, on point. So I think it's important uh, that each of you within your area of influence, that you really relate to the people out there, that if you want to continue to have a service, it's gonna, you're going to need to look at this emergency service district throughout the county. I think it's important for all of us. There's no guarantees, but it's uh, Mr. Wilson said earlier, with this Eagle for Shell moving into the county and some of the um, facilities that's being built at the Lauren Texas and everything, they're going to be a bigger pool of income, which uh, your homeowners and everything, it should drive your tax rate down on your at the Lauren Texas. I said, none of us can guarantee anything on that. But it the maximum allowance, if, I, if I'm right, is, is, correct me if I'm wrong, the maximum allowance is 10% or 10 cents. 10 cents on the value. 10 cents on the value. The current county, but it can also be extended beyond that to a sales tax and other things if there's capital investment that needs to be made during a certain period of time. We're so talking about actually go up to 15 to 20%. Thank you, sir. Uh, the uh, we, the county itself does not have a sales tax in place, and we've checked in, and it's not feasible for the county to go to a sales tax. So it uh, will be based on the Avalon taxes. Uh, the, uh, your uh, the tax rate at this point is 0.4. About 45, 45. 45. If you go and check the list of all counties around in this region that somewhat are the same size, you will find that it runs from 69 to 59 to whatever. We've got one of the lower tax rates in the area. And if you look at Guadalupe County, Bear County, which much of theirs come from sales tax, they will have a slightly lower tax rate. But all of the counties is basically the same. This county has a much higher tax rate. So what I'm saying is, you're going to be paying a lower 
uh, your, your taxes should not vary too much from what they are now if, if, we go, if, this, if it goes into place. And but having said that, I, I just hope that everybody thinks about, uh, I've had a number of people contact me and said, gosh, do something about keeping our EMS, and I wouldn't be alive today if it wasn't for them. So uh, it's kind of like insurance. Until you need it, it, it may not seem significant, but when it's needed, it's, it is needed and it's needed then. So everybody please give some thought to uh, to supporting and pushing for uh, countywide ESD for EMS services. That, anyone else have anything?